Hallelujah, people of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm. In those days in the 80s, we always sing, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah, our hand. <laughs> our hand was the musical instrument. And you know that's the fastest, the best, and the quickest musical instrument. That's your hand. You can make any type of, any kind of musical sound with it. And bless and praise Jehovah. Wow. That was what we were using in those days. Blessing and magnifying. Worshipping and honoring. Jehovah Shalom, the mighty man of valor. That was what we were using. Exerting his holiness. And we always sing, praise the Lord, 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 praise him, praise the Lord, oh, praise the Lord. In fact, in those days, when you are singing and praising God, you don't look at right, you don't look at left, you don't look what other person is wearing, because you came to serve God, not to come and see what men are wearing, not to come and see what that woman is wearing, not to come and see mini skate, not to come and see cotton, not to come and see laughs. No, 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 no. You were concerned. We were always concentrated, worshiping and praising the name of the Lord. We are not looking aside. What is she wearing? What is she wearing? Everybody was, you know, concerned about God and what God. God can do. We are using our hand, praising the Lord, worshiping Him. Do you know that when you are clapping your hand like this medically, you are doing a great exercise. All the points, all the points of artery meeting and whatever in your hand that connects to your brain, that connects to your vertebrae, the moment you are clapping your whole hands like this, you are doing a wonderful exercise. Just try it for 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You see heat all over your body. You are equally doing exercise. For those of you that are too busy to do exercise, come on. When you clap your hand, I mean opening it like this, jam it like that. Open it and clap it like that. You see you are doing a great exercise before the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah, people of God. What a great God. Oh, in those days when we sing this song, you see joy, you see excitement. People will come to fellowship with burden, with tears. But by the time they'll be going home, everybody will be excited. Everybody will be glad in that. Everybody will be dancing home. You see the mountain that was waiting for the person or the great mountain the person came with after praising and magnifying the name of the Lord. After hearing on the luted word of God, the person will go home forgetting his problems. But in today's church, when somebody hasn't money and come to the church, the way they will magnify the people that have money, the way they will praise them, oh, the person will be wounded the more. The person will say, I will go for money. I will go and look for money by all means. In those days, Christians are known by the way they worship God, by the closeness to the Lord, and not by what they possess, and not by what they acquire. Unlike the Christianity of today, when you say, I'm a man of God, they say, what does he have? What kind of car does he ride? What kind of church does he have? Has he a cathedral? Has he a private jet? What I say? This is not why God called us. This is not why we are here. All these things are by God. All these things are the little addition when you have them and when you don't have them. The most important thing is to focus and worship your God. When you serve God in purity and holiness, you don't have anything to blame. You don't have anything to regret about. Remember, we're talking about believers' identity in Christ. Whom Christ has made you and who Christ is expecting you to be. Stop looking backwards. Stop seeing that problem. Stop seeing that trouble. Stop seeing that setback. Stop seeing that. Begin to see Jesus of Nazareth. Begin to see the man of war. Begin to see the ancient of the days. Begin to see the Holy One of Israel. Begin to see the ancient of the days. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're seeing your husband. That's why you're failing. You're seeing your, your wife. That's why you're failing. You're seeing your pastor. That's why you're failing. When you look beyond your pastor, Pastor, when you look beyond your wife, when you look beyond your husband, when you look beyond that man, when you look beyond that woman, and you look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, when you will not fall for any man, but you look unto Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is King, who is God, who is Lord, who is Father. The Lord that is everything to us, that's He we are He wants you to look upon. Stop looking at man. Man may promise I'm sending you money. You wait, you cannot see the money. He's a mere man. But when God makes a promise, his promise is ever there. We're talking about believers' identity in Christ, whom he has made us to be in Christ. But because we're falling standard of God, because we're falling short of this standard, God has set this standard. 
Above it is past man. Below it is failure. Therefore, why can't we say, let's follow the past standard of God. God cannot lower his standard because of you, because of me. He has set a standard. The standard had been there before you were born. Standard had been there before Abraham. Abraham went through the standard. Job went through the standard. Isaiah went through the standard. Temple went through the standard. Peter went through the standard. The Lord Jesus came and, you know, perfected the standard. And if all these things were there, and this standard were there before, then who are you to change the standard of God? God cannot change the standard because of you. And God cannot lower his standard because of you. What he wants you to do is to come up. We're talking about believer's identity in Christ. In the New Testament, we don't have any reason. We don't have any reason to give. Because God came closer to man in the New Testament. God came closer and he gave up those people in the Old Testament. They serve God without the Holy Spirit. But today, the third person in God, in the Trinity, the Spirit of the Living God is down with us today to guide us, to direct us, to put sweetness and testimonies in our mouth. So, child of God, what am I trying to say about you? We're talking about believers' identity in Christ. Shall we pray? Fathers, we're talking about believers' identity in Christ. Help us, O oh Lord, to really be who you want us to be. Open our eyes of understanding to know who you have been wanting us to be. And Father, we know we've provoked you. We have so made you to be provoked and annoyed that we don't get up to your standard but forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us, mighty man of valor. Forgive us, ancient of the dead. Forgive us, the Holy One of Israel. Forgive us, man of war. Father, show us mercy. Father, show us mercy. Father, show us mercy. Daddy, show us mercy. And bring us to a standard again. Let the Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of the true and the living God, direct us to where God is. Direct us to closeness of the Lord. Father, we got to, we love to be with you forever in eternity. Direct our way, direct our steps, O Lord. As many that are seeking and looking for your spirit and the truth, may they really get God in Jesus. Jesus name and let the name of Christ alone be glorified for unto the Lord be all the glory in Jesus wonderful name we pray amen God bless you all it's well with you thank you so much I can see a lot of people here already online Oh, ready to be favored, ready to be blessed. As many that are peers, as many that are watching, as many that are listening, you see goodness of the Lord. You see mercy of the Lord. You see favor of the Lord. You see God and in a mighty way, in a greater way, in a higher way, in action in Jesus' name. Unto the Lord be our glory. As we go ahead and go on, God is worthy and wonderful. Thank God for you and those of you that are sharing the messages, keeping it on, encouraging us. Thank you so much and God will keep you. God will bless you as you advertise the work of God. So will God make you great and advertise you the more. Today we are talking about holy without blame. Holy without blame. One of the things that is our identity in Christ is holy without blame. Stop seeing yourself as that wretched old sinner. Stop seeing yourself as that tattered old sinner. The, the sinner that we are merely forgiven and then God is trying to accept you. No, 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 no. That time the blood wash you. That time the blood cleanse you. There's no more blame. Let's see the Bible. Today we're talking about holy without blame. Child of God, you're holy. You don't have any blame. There's no blame in you. There's no blame round about you. God has forgiven the past. He has forgiven the present. And don't go into future to mess up your life anymore. For God Almighty has forgiven you and there is no blame. You know, in the, when people will do things like that, even in every country, when you are, when you are, you know, when you commit any criminal offense and at the end of the day you go to court, and the court convict the person that he committed a criminal offense. They are opposed. The person cannot accept or have in his life. Whenever the person wants to come up, they say, no, he was ex convict He did that. He did that. He did that. The court charged him for this. He was one time a criminal. He was one time first so, 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 so long. They will be there for you until the person dies in that country. The person will not occupy so, 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 post. That is why whenever the politician get into any trouble, any pen, any criminal offense, they after the Low court, they go to high court, they can go to a peak court, they can do all they could do, even at the Supreme Court, to make sure it is off their head. But the sin they have been committing, God is recording every day, they have not done anything. They have not gone to the blood of Jesus of Nazareth and appeared that the blood is going to cleanse them and appear that the blood is going to wash them and make them whole, clean, and pure. What are we trying to say, children of God? We are children of light. God is our Father. Hallelujah. So, human being can remember what you have done. There are some friends that, even friends, 
You told some of your secret, if you have an issue with him, he will tell you all these things. Hey, are you not the one that did this? Are you not the one that stole? You told me you stole. Are you not the one that told me the secret of how you made your money, how you did it, how you robbed this person? That is because he's a human being. But for before God, is holy without blame. Holy without blame. Holy without blame. God will not disappoint you. Let me talk to somebody here. This God you are serving in spirit and in truth. This God you are started serving with all your heart and mind will not fail you. This God will not put you to shame. This God will elevate you and make you happy and glad in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we're talking about holy without blame. The Lord that make it possible that despite who you were before, despite your former situation, despite everything, he made you holy without blame. Whenever God forgives you, he doesn't remember the past anymore. All you need to do is to come in again. All you need to do is to walk up with the Lord. All you need to do is to follow the standard. All you need to do is to come closer. All you need to do is to listen. All you need to do is to obey. All you need to do is to follow the divine instruction of the Lord. And the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, we're taking a test from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Let me tell you, time shall come when people will no more hear this raw gospel we're preaching. We may be preaching and people may be going, uh, uh, you know, where they're talking, where they're naked, where they're talking hip hop, where they're doing this and doing that, where it is happening. They hear you the raw word of the Lord. Share you the raw word of the Lord. Time shall come when they will look for the gospel preachers and they will see them no more. When rapture must have occurred and taken place and the righteous have taken away, the people that preach this raw message, the people that preach what they call nonsense, they have all gone. They will look for us. They will not see us again. They will look for this type of word. They will not see the word again. They will see men and women of their type. Men and women of their type. If you are a man of God, if you are a woman of God, you are in social media and you're preaching, you're not having followers. No, you're a trumpeter. Keep on sounding the trumpet, especially on top of the mountain. When you sound the trumpet on top of the mountain, you may see very few people that is walking around. You may think that the only one that hear you, but the trumpet have gone far away. It has gone some kilometers away and a lot of people are hearing the trumpet you're sounding. Don't lower the standard because people are not listening. A lot of churches today, what they're doing, because there are no more followers, they will introduce it, uh, this and that. I know one church right now, they say that youth are running away from the church. Youth is going where it is happening. What is the problem of the youth? The women say they want to be wearing trousers. Uh -huh. They want to be fixing with one. Is that all? They want to paint their white, uh, their black natural hair. They want to paint it into green, into blue. And uh, does it really matter? They say they want to wear mini skirt. Allow them now. Let us grow like others. Uh. Don't grow like others. Uh. Don't grow like others. Uh. Don't grow like others. Grow according to the will of the Lord. The Bible said in Acts of the Apostle that the apostles were moving from house to house, breaking bread, preaching the word of God. And the Bible, the word of God said, and God was adding to the church as many that should be saved. Is God that add to the church as many that should be saved. The church of today have failed and failed woefully. Today what is happening everywhere. Before, before, when the church want to seek the face of the Lord, the church will go in secret and seek the face of the Lord. The men of God will go for 20 days, 21 days praying and fasting, 40 days praying and fasting. They will go to the mountain. They will disappear from the church. They will go in the closet. They will pray and get power, get unction, get anointing, and they will come down. And when they come down, things start to happen and Prayer is where we get our real power, the source of power, connection and communication with the Lord. But today, what are we doing? Anytime the church wants to do seven days praying and fasting, we'll get and announce it. Hey, we are preparing to pray. We we'll tell the devil, we we'll tell the unbeliever, we we'll tell the demon, we we'll tell the power of darkness. We want to fast for seven days. We put it in radio, we put it in newspaper, we put it in Facebook. So come and join us. And that day the devil will come and join us. The demons will come and join us. Our cutting power will come and join us. Unbelievers will come and join us. Raw sinners will come and join. And prayer is where God has the selection. God said that. The Bible, the word of God said that. You must be fully for I am holy. By the time you are praying, inviting all these people, the prayer will no more work. 
in the prayer is you and God. Communication with God is not bringing sinners and everybody. We are doing 21 days praying and fasting. We are doing 30 days praying and fasting, 40 days praying and fasting. Invite the people, go out and bring everybody in. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Child of God, it doesn't work that way. Bible says when you want to pray, go to your closest and pray. Your father that sees in secret, we reward you in the open. And what are we doing today? We come and pray in the open. Then we are doing the opposite. When we pray in the open, Will it be in the secret that God will reward us? No, when we pray in the secret, He will reward us in the open. Look at what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. 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 The Bible said, According as they are choosing us in Him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Before the foundation of the earth, you have been choosing. Before the foundation of the earth, before you were born, before everything written before your grandmother, your great-grandmother had been born. Before the foundation of the earth, when human beings have not been created, when the foundation of the earth has not been laid, the Lord knew there's somebody like you. The Lord know you live in the city you are living today. The Lord know you be in the school where you are today. The Lord know you be in the job where you are today. All the mistakes you have made, the Lord know you make them, and that's why he preserved you. There are a lot of people that made the same mistake you made, and they are alive today. They have gone. God have chosen you. The Bible says, according to are choosing all in himself before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him. We have been in God and God created us here on earth and we become human beings and when we die the spirit will get back to the Lord then our soul will be the determinant factor where are you going to spend eternity in hell or in heaven God is not seeing you as a blamed person. Are you not the one that committed stealing last time? Are you not the one that committed five abortion? No God is not more seeing us like that. The Bible said according as are choosing all in himself before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame and before him God is no more laying any blame on you you don't have that blame anymore. He has chosen you. He has cleansed you. He has purified you. That is one of the things you are in Christ. When one is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. All things are passed behold. All things have become new. That is who you are in Christ. Child of God, no more blame. Blame because you didn't go to school. Blame because you, you, you wiped away or you wiped away your youthful time. Blame because of... No, 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 no. When you are in Christ Jesus, he has chosen you. All those gaps you made in the name of Mr. Mistake, he will feed them up. He will he will beautify you again, and that will be that joy and that peace again. Are you hearing me? Can you come closer to Jesus? Can you come to inner 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 part? You are the you are called one of the inner people in Christ. You know Jesus have the three. He has the twelve. He has the 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 the, the, the disciples, and then he had the multitude. Where do you belong? He has the three. He has the twelve, he has the seventy-two. Then he has the multitude. Where do you belong? The Lord wants you to come in and come in. Stop comparing your Christianity with any man. Stop comparing what you are passing through with what any other person is passing through. No, 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 no. There's the kind of love God has bestowed on you. Are you not the one passing through this? Are you still not alive? Are you still not healthy? Are you not still strong? You think without that man you would have died. You think without that woman you would have died. You think without that person you would have died. But look at your life moving on and moving on. To prove that your life is in the hands of the Lord and not in the hand of anybody. The topic of today we're talking on a general topic the team that says uh, believers identity in Christ but the topic of today says holy without blame holy without blame in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 4 God have called us into holiness God have called us without blame therefore what mistake have you done even when you're in Christ Jesus when you're God born again you see yourself making one mistake or the other using one silly word using one, falling into any sin you say hey who am I I'm sorry Lord, when you repent genuinely from your heart, when you repent genuinely from the bottom of your heart, there's one lady like that, she committed immorality, she committed fornication. As a very young lady, she told God she's not going to break her virginity, she came into Christianity with her virginity, but she fell short of the standard, and she saw herself committing fornication. It wound her heart, for days she couldn't eat, she was crying before the Lord. <clears throat> And in the court of devil and darkness, they were unhappy. The devil was busy promoting the demon that lured her into the committing such a crime. Lured her into committing such a thing. While the devil was busy promoting them, this lady knelt down for a day. She was crying unto the Lord. She was repenting. She was pouring up her heart. And all of a sudden, you know, 
thunder begin to blow in the power of darkness, in the house of darkness, God begin to deal with the demon that were used to lead her into unrighteousness. Oh my God. And the lady and the kingdom of darkness, they got shivered and they ran away. Why? The lady have repented. Have you repented from that your mistake? From that sin? From that wickedness? Can you repent today? The Lord will not lay blame on you anymore. The Lord will not lay blame on you anymore. There was that lady before she got born again. She was living in fornication in immorality. She was living in uh, sins uh, and now uh, she had a lot of abortion that wounded her womb and at the end of the day her womb was cut off. She got married and another person was there who never even tried such a thing. And that lady that uh, knew she had no womb, she got born again. She came into Christ and people were coming for marriage to preach a God. Some people are marrying the flesh. Some people are marrying the pointed nose. Some people are marrying the charming eye. The lady told them, no, 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 no. I will not belong here. I will not get married. I want to serve God. So many people make time to evangelize her and talk to her. You are beautiful. God created you fine. You need to produce your type. The lady knew why she didn't want to marry. She didn't want to get in, involved in marriage because she knows she has messed up her life and said, now I am in Christ. Now that God has shown me mercy, I am not going to do anything. I am not going to do anything funny. I want to continue in Christ. I want to focus in Christ. I want to remain in Christ. I want to be a seed of God. I want to be a seed of righteousness. I want to be a child of God. I want to serve God with all I have. Thank God he saved my life. The days of my life, he has said, the remaining days of my life, I will not do anything funny. I want to use it to serve my king. I want to use it to serve my Lord. But people were plagiarizing her and one man came one day and said, the Lord said that you'll marry you. The lady smiled and smiled and told him, the, the lady went and told the pastor. The lady went and told the pastor, a lot of men are disturbing me. Ah, and many of them are busy telling me it is the Lord that told them that I that you should marry them. The lady was telling them, no, I can do such a thing. No, the pastor convinced the lady. The lady now told the pastor. Pastor said, hey. And pastor said, no problem. And they prayed and the lady left. Do you know men were still coming to the stop? I'm talking about holy without blame. When he have chosen you, he have chosen your mistake. Are you hearing me? He knew you made those mistakes in your life. He will wash you, cleanse you, but the devil will come back and remind you what you have done in the past. Old things have passed away. They are behind you. You don't go back to the old. You look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. You go on and you move ahead. You know, when the devil reminds you of your past, tell him it is under the cross. Tell him it is under the blood. Tell him Jesus, somebody have paid for your debt, sir. It is no more you. Ha, ah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So because of the situation of this particular lady, men were still coming. They saw beauty, an angelic beauty. They saw her beauty serving God. And then when they were coming and coming, one of them came and said, I want to, went to pastor. Pastor said, go and tell the God. The lady, they told the lady, the lady said, go and tell the pastor. The pastor sent him to the lady. The lady sent back to the pastor. The man was confused and said, why are you tontoning me? Why are you tontoning me? Oh, I cannot continue like this. And at the end of the day, the, lady, the man said he's so sure. He believed God, that God is the one that is leading him. And then the pastor told the lady, and said, be open up to the man. Let's see what will happen. And while they were talking, the lady spoke to the man and said, well, do you know what? It's not that I don't want to get married, but because of the kind of rough life, because of the old life I live, because of the rugged life I live, because of the sinful life I lived, it affected the womb and that her womb had been cut off because of series of abortion. So she cannot, because of the dangerous drug she drank in those days. You know, so many people getting into abortion, the doctor will take scissors. Uh, he doesn't see it with his eye. He'll just be cutting off, cutting off, cutting off. What is he cutting off? He's cutting off what he doesn't see. And before understanding, a lot of part of the womb will be affected. Like I remember what happened years ago. I was in a crochet ground. I told them there is a man that is here. You are selling medicine. A lot of ladies will come. You continue committing abortion, but the Lord said that you warn you. The Lord said that you tell you any abortion you commit again, the lady will die and you'll be in a great trouble. The man was there. I said it on the first door of the crusade. The Lord put it in my mind on the second door of the crusade. In the ending of church service, I still said it again. After some three, four months, sir. After four months, some people came to the office and they were telling me, you say so, 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 a man came. Are you not the one that came to say so, so, so? I said, yes, I did. He said, you made so, so, so prophecy. I said, I think I can still remember what I stood to speak 
not, uh, not uh, uh, the Lord was speaking. It was not me. I know it was a warning from the Lord. The man said, it has happened. That. The man said, a particular lady in that time was pregnant. They went to chemist who had been committing abortion. And the chemist did that. The chemist man was there. They said at that time, I was saying that. Some people were even looking at the chemist man. They were all looking at him. Many people that know him, they know he's an abortion specialist. And they were all looking at that. And this man, this lady came. Despite the warning that was given that day, up to three, four times warning that was given on that crusade ground. In those days of crusade, the man were all there, he listened there, but he went to do his own way. And what happened? Along, along, along the line, the lady came in, and the man did like before, gave him some concussion, whatever, whatever, blood started rushing out, blood started rushing out, and after some time, they discovered again that the lady was swelling, not knowing that they, it is twins that they were trying to abort. They succeeded in aborting one, and the other one died in her womb, and she got rotten in her womb, and along the line, that one died. The, the lady died, and the man was in a very serious, serious problem. I don't know where about him anywhere, because some people were begging him, they begging the family if they can come, and then let's see what we can do about that. But God has spoken. God has spoken, so it's only God that can remedy what has already spoken. Why can't we list the man? Why do we harden our heart? Just as we're talking about heaven and hell, as we're talking about rapture, a lot of people will harden their heart. It is after rapture, they will look for God. Look at what is happening in Nigeria now. Flood has covered every, many places in Nigeria. A lot of people have run away. For, the thing that touched me most is that some of those swampy areas, some people were sleeping. The heavy rain was too much. In the middle of the night, the rain came forth and cover them. Many people have died out of this. You will not die a careless death in Jesus' name. You will not die unprepared death. I mean, you would live to old age in the name of Jesus Christ. So the Bible said, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in Christ. So no matter who you are in the Lord, no matter what has happened, I'm trying to talk to you. The lady was so, you know, so optimistic. She don't want to get married. When that man came and troubled her and troubled her, I said, the Lord said, I will marry you. The Lord said, the lady opened up and said, sir, you said you love me. Let me prove your love. The lady opened up the man and told the man, when you marry, won't you like to have a child? The man said, why not? The lady said, well, my type will not give you a child. My child, type, so what do you mean? What do you mean that your type will not give me a child? He said, well, my type will not give you a child because, ah, uh, uh, because of the rough life I live, I don't have womb anymore. The man fainted. The man fainted. And the lady who has a strong faith started praying for the man, asking God, pouring water, and the man revived. Uh, there are things that will make people to faint, it will not make you to faint. May you never she news you are not prepared to hear not come your way in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said that trust in the Lord, their heart is fixed, believe in the Lord. May your heart be fixed so that trust in the Lord. May your heart be fixed so that you can trust in the Lord, in the power of his mind and majesty. So when the lady ended up telling him about this, the man fainted after some time, the man got to himself, ah, he bent down after some time and looked at the eyes of the lady and said, I love you, I will marry you. The lady cried and said, what do you mean? After I have told you who I am, why not tell that man that wants to marry the truth of the whole thing? What are you covering and what are you covering? What are you holding? What are you covering? What are you covering all these things? So what are we trying to say, child of God? What are we trying to say? What are we hiding? What are we covering? Everything you hide shall be exposed. But the one you exposed by yourself will have no hiding place anymore. Righteousness is what exhausts a nation. Without blame, without blame. So the lady got married and her girlfriend knows that she had no womb. The lady, the, her girlfriend kept the secret for her and they are laughing. And her girlfriend got married two years before the, the lady that had no womb got married. And her girlfriend was there, uh, five years I mean before the lady. The girlfriend had been married for five years, no issue. And this girl just got wedded. She was open to God. She was plain to God. She knows she has no womb. She don't want to mess up herself with any man. She would not want to, you know, dwell in regret of why didn't you tell me. She forget about marriage. She was prejudicing to that. And then she went into that. Two months after their wedding, three months after their wedding, four months after their wedding, their belly the belly started rising. The lady couldn't believe it. The husband said, but you said you don't have 
a baby. If you don't have womb before, he said, this is miracle. This is the great miracle of the Lord. And the lady got delivered. When the other one had been in five, six years in marriage, the one that fetched she kept herself, could not see, could not have a child. He went and started quarreling the pastor. You say you are a man of God. This lady had been a bad girl. She has no womb. She's my friend. I was there that day. The abortion was done. And her womb was cut off. I was there. She knew she had no. Then even after the last abortion, she was flirting anyhow after because she knew she had no womb how did come that she's the one to have a baby and i that kept myself and never have a baby you know what you did you know how you prayed for her i accuse you you love her more than you do love me oh come on what a miraculous god we serve what a mighty god of miracle that which is hopeless in the life of people and people are looking at you with the eyes of hopelessness the lord will turn your hopelessness into hope the lord will turn your hopelessness into a miracle. The Lord will turn your situation into an amazing one. And that shall be dancing and that shall be rejoicing. If you believe it, can you say amen? And it will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That your situation will not continue ruggedly like that. There must be a change and that's why you're born into that family. And that's why you're married into that family. You are an agent of change. You have come to bring a change. Change does not come unless fire comes. Before the change will come, you have the fire in you so that when you move in darkness the darkness will turn to light may the mighty hand of grace help us may the mighty hand of power of God lift us up and high may we be who God wants us to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth hallelujah we shall conquer and we're conquering already. That means you don't have blame. Before God, you are not blamed. You may see yourself deformed. Before God, you are not deformed. You may see yourself as not married, but that's not what God is looking at. No blame, you know, no present blame, no past blame, no blame of any type. Let me read it again in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. According to us choosing us in him before the foundation of the world. The choice was made by God and not by me. Therefore, when the devil wants to question why must you be a sinner, of God. Tell him the choice was made by God himself. Many other people God chose. They refused to be children of God. But the choice was made and the calling was given to you. You had it. You answered. And that's why you are a child of God today. I want to say congratulations for being a child of God. Congratulations for remaining in Christ. Congratulations for following the way of Christ. It may be hard. Continue. It may be high. Continue. It may be hard. Continue. There's a victory at the end of that road. You're walking. When you're walking on the glorious load of holiness and righteousness. The Bible said that we should be holy without blame before him. The Lord has made this. If God has kept this standard, I will move on the standard. I will be who he wants me to be. I will move. I will be without blame in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible said in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 16. 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 The Bible said, Because it is written, Be you holy, for I am holy. The Lord is holy, He wants you to be holy. The Lord is holy, He wants you to be holy. Child of God, the Lord is holy, He wants you to be holy. Can you make up your mind today and say, Holiness is my portion, I'm going to be holy. Have have you seen it? God is holy. That means he wants us to be like him. He wants us to come closer to him. He wants us to move closer to him. He wants us to flow with him. He wants us to talk with him. He wants us to discuss with him. He wants us to fly with him. He wants us to have communion with him. Be you holy, for I am holy. Holiness only emanates from him. And then there's no how you can be holy without being closer to this God of holiness. Hey, yeah, yeah. Do you know what God wants us to be? Look at exactly what God wants us to be. Take any material like that. Then put it in a paint. Maybe you take a very clean white material, put it in a red paint, it turns to be red. That's who God has been. God is a holy God. He wants us to fall into him so that we can, we can have his nature. And when we have the nature of God, we think like God, we reason like God, we move like God, we behave like God. Everything around about us will be God-like. And we'll be doing what God said we should do and not our own way. May the name of Christ alone be glorified and magnified in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Christ of Nazareth. So, without blame, God has created you without blame. You can go on, you can move on, you can go ahead. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ. That's what the Bible is saying. When you are living in holiness, you don't have condemnation. Just like you, a young lady that is listening to me now. If you are a lady, you're not married. Or even if you are married for one year or two, your husband has not been in town. And maybe you didn't see your period after three days. Four days, one week, you don't even see your period. Your heart will be relaxed because you know you didn't mess up yourself. You didn't go to any man. That is why God said without blame. You can't blame yourself. Oh, why am I pregnant? It doesn't come through drinking of water. It doesn't come through eating of food. No, you are not pregnant. You know, something wanting or daughter must have been the problem. But if it's somebody that's already been messing up, the person's heart, even if he doesn't say it for one day, he'll be suffocating, he will be shaking. A lady came to my office and was so worried. I was so troubled that day I'm supposed to see my period in two days' time. I have not seen my period. I'm not seeing. My... I said, Why are you troubling yourself? Why are you troubling? He said, I know. I know how it happens to me. I know how it used to be. Oh, that day I am worried. Can you pray? I said, It's no matter of prayer. This is what nature has made it to be. Has it been happening like this? He said, No. Then why are you so worried? Not knowing that she has messed up her life. And fear has gripped her, and the devil was talking to her. You're already pregnant. You have done this. You have done that. And what are we saying, children of God? This is the time. The day that serve God must serve Him in spirit and in truth. This is hour of holiness. This is hour of righteousness. This is hour to honor and to glorify God. Amen. And may the name of Christ alone be magnified and worship. And may the name of Christ alone be praised and glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Have you seen it? We are created to walk in holiness. God putting his righteousness in us. And where we walk in the way of the Lord. God aiding us. The Bible says, you lead me to a path of righteousness for your name's sake. Not because you have the power, you overcome that sin. You, that money came into your hand, you kept it, you didn't eat it. That bribe, you're supposed to take it, you didn't take it. This is uh, supposed to happen. You're supposed to have fallen into that sexual immorality. You didn't, you didn't fall into it. It's not by your power, it's not by your mind. It's because there is somebody who has given you a spirit of God, who has given you a spirit of cleanliness, a spirit of purity, spirit of righteousness. Look at what the Bible said in Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. We're going to read verse 5 and verse 6. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Have you heard it? If you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure. God is calling us to holiness. Look at what verse is saying. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of praise. Hallelujah. And holy nation. We are called to be holy nation. All the believers put together, we are the holy nation. You are a nation in that the nation. You may be in the nation of Spain. You may be in the nation of Italy. You may be in the nation of you, uh, uh, of. United Kingdom, in the nation of United States of America, in the nation of Nigeria, in the nation of Egypt. You are a nation in a nation. All of you believers there, you are a nation of holiness and righteousness. Look at what the Bible said. We're read in 19 verses. If it's not chapter 19, look at verses right now. The Bible said, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. That means all of us that are born again, we're a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And the holy nation. These are the word quit thou shall speak unto the children of Israel. Tell your children they are they are priests of the Lord. You know, in the New Testament, we are all called royal priesthood. Every child of God in the New Testament is a priest. Do you know you have priests? You have a high priest. The one that are called out are like the high priest. And the priest of the priest of praise of all is the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay? And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Kingdom of priests and a holy nation. May God continue cleansing our heart, redesigning our heart to know our calling. Redesigning our heart to know where we belong. Redesigning our heart to know this is what we're called to do and this is where we're called to be. This is the place we're called to be. A peculiar nation. Holy without blame. 
God wants you to live that holy life without blame. I pray that God, as God has helped you, there shall be no blame in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray you are not going to defect from your faith. I pray you are not going to move away from your faith. But you are going to be who God wants you to be, standing in the purity of God, standing in the purity of his power, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the mighty hand of grace help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Even in the Old Testament, we are asked to be without blame. God would not want that blame in you. What are those things that will bring blame in your life? Can you tell them because of where I belong? I will not want any blame. Because God has not input any blame in me. Even though the sins I committed in my past life, the way I live it, he cleansed me, he removed all the blame from me. Then why should I be the one to attract blame in my life? In the book of Numbers chapter 6, Numbers chapter 6, Verse 14. 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 And he shall offer his offering unto the Lord. One he lamb of the first year without blame. Have you seen it? Without blame for burnt offering. And one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish for a sin offering. One ram without blemish for a peace offering. When you continually Offer this without blame. Offer this without blame. Offer this without blame. Don't come to God with all the blame. Don't come to God with heap of sin. Don't come to God with heap of lie. Don't come to God with heap of backsliding. Don't come to God with heap of unforgiveness. No, these are the blame the devil wants you to have. God cleanse you and have no blame in you. But the devil wants you to have a lot of blame. There are a lot of people who are not going to make heaven because of the blame they have. What will be the blame? Because they are liars. They'll be blamed for lying. They'll be blamed for living in moral sin. Some people are drinking in secret. They go and keep alcohol. Nobody's there. Nobody's there. When you do the alcohol, take the alcohol and drink, nobody sees you, but there's a bigger eyes. There's a mightier eye that is seeing you and all that you are doing. So child of God, what are we trying to say? Can you repent of all this thing and tell God and say, Father, I have been that man, I have been that woman. I am sorry. I want to serve you without blame. I don't want to have any doubt of mistake. I don't want to have any iota of anything. I want to serve God with a clean heart and a clean heart. A clean hand 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 and a clean heart. May the Lord grant you the desire of your heart that you will serve him without blame in the name of Jesus Christ. All those things you have done in the past that could have bring blame, the Lord have cleansed the blame. Don't attract any blame again. Let it be your daily prayer. God, I don't want to serve you with blame. I want to serve you blameless, O oh God. I want to serve you in holiness. I want to serve you with a clean heart and a pure heart. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're not going to have any blame in serving our God. We're not going to have any blame in serving our Maker. We're not going to have any blame in serving the Master of our life. We're not going to have any blame. In the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1, Romans chapter 12 verse 1, the Lord wants you to come. This is believer's identity in Christ. Without blame, who can blame him whom Christ has cleansed? Who can blame him whom Christ has purified? Except you yourself that is going back to sin, unrighteousness, impurity, and uncleanliness. But if Christ has delivered you already, the Bible said in, in, in Romans 12 verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of, the, uh, uh, message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Present your body as a, 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 you know, without blame before the Lord. What are those things that will bring blame? A lot of us today are going into the world. Many of us are wearing trash suit as a footballer to come and stand at the altar of the living God. Many of us are taking football, whatever, and put it on as their mantle. I belong to this club. I belong to this fan. I belong to this player. And they put this on and they come to miss it with Christianity. Doesn't God have a standard? Why are you bringing different, different standards? So many people are putting on the attire of a harlot and they wear a attire of a harlot onto the church of God, onto the altar. Why are you defiling this thing? Why are you bringing all this blame? Present your body a living sacrifice, holy without blame. Holy and acceptable before the Lord. Why all this blame? Why are you, where, where do you get 
get all this heat from? Why are you carrying all this thing into Christianity? No, Christianity is not a dumping ground. It is the cross of uh, feet uh, at, the, at the feet of Christ. That's a dumping ground. Dump all your sins there and then be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Be cleansed and be purified. Not that when the blood has washed you, you go back again and come back. Do you know what the Bible said? If the blood of Jesus has truly cleansed you and your sins have been forgiven and you're flowing with the grace of God, Bible said when you go back and attract those sins willingly and bring them back into Christianity, Bible said before God will forgive you, it will be hard and difficult. It will be very, very hard and difficult. Don't import all these unbelieving things into Christianity. Christianity is a holy ground. Christianity is a holy place. The Bible, the word of God said, well, we read, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That means you don't need to do it for one day. You need to do it every day. It needs to be a daily occurrence. You present yourself. I remember in those days when I was living with my grandmother, a year we were cooking with firewood in those days. Uh, sometime when I wake up, when my grandmother would get up early to go out, then I have to get up and prepare for school. When she is not there to help me prepare food for the school, when I get up as a small boy, what will I do? I fear that I am going late. And I fear that the ashes we use yesterday, there is still some hotness in it. I will make a new fire on top of the old ashes. And then I'll prepare my food. And when my grandmother come in, she begin, when she eat the food, she begin to have cold. She will call me. Ah, you make the old fire there. You know, I said, boy, I said, no. He said, shut up your mouth. That is what you did. That's what you did. Ah, I will deny now as a young man, as a small boy now, so that I will not be beaten and things like that. And one day she did as if she had gone off and uh, as if she has gone up. And what happened uh, along, 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 along the line? She hid. When I was trying to do that, she surfaced and said, tomorrow now you say you didn't do it. We were all children. Are you hearing me? All those things your children are doing now. You close the air. You'll be a shot. You did them. You did them. No be, but what be waiting man so in the reap? But tell God, say, ah, now me do, I'm a beg, I don't want to repent. I don't repent. Tell God, I don't repent. Now me, these children repent. May they never do me like this again. We did all those things in those days. Are you hearing me? But today we cover ourselves just like, as we cover ourselves today because we have been saved, we call them sinners, the unbelievers, the people that don't know God, the people that don't have this and that. We were all in that line. We were one time like sinners. We was one time in that life. But God have delivered us. Why can't we have bowels of compassion on our brothers and sisters and know that they are passing through such a period of time? Knowing that the Bible said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 that the whom the God of this world have blessed Blinded the eyes of the unbelievers. Our eyes were blinded. Somebody were praying for us. Mercy of God were being thrown to us. And our eyes opened up. And we said we can't continue with our old way. We can't continue with the old religion. We can't continue with the old road. And we repented. And we become born again children of God. And you are seeing people who is still in that case. Who is still in that band by the same chain. You are calling them different type of name. You are messing them up. No, 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 no. Show them mercy. Show them compassion. Let there be repentance. Let there be renewal. Let there be restoration. Let there be revival. Let there be revisitation. Let the mercy and hand of the Lord walk upon their life again. Continue praying for anyone that is not born again. That your unbelieving mother, unbelieving father, unbelieving brother, unbelieving sister, unbelieving friend. Continue praying for them that they will come to the light of the Lord. That the light of salvation will shine in them. So that the darkness in them will quench and the light will come up and darkness will disappear. And they will jump up and know what you have known. And they will be rejoicing. Hallelujah. We did those things in those days. Not because somebody is doing them today. We come and prove so Santimonos. Santimonos is holier than thou attitude. We were one time in that show. We were one time that liar. We were one time those disobedient children. We were one time arguing the word of God. As they're arguing, he said, I don't have time to argue with those idiots, with those foolish men who are arguing the word of God. They are not of themselves, as you are not of yourself. Another power entered into you, as another negative power is working in them. Show them mercy, show them compassion. Come down to their level, even when they insult you, it doesn't mean you seal up your mind, still talk to them. If God have sealed up his mind in those days against you, if that man, that brother, that sister have sealed their mind against you in those days, you wouldn't have been born again without blame. What are those things that make you to be blamed? What are those things that will make you to be blamed? Just like Michak and Nabak, the Bible said, there was no blame that was found in them. They were clean, they were pure. When Esther walked to see the king, there was no blame. The king saw a perfect woman 
in and out, up and down, in character, in manner, in behavior. And the king said, wow, what am I seeing? What am I really seeing? Can I see such a beautiful woman, even more beautiful than Vatish, the queen I married before? Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a great God. May we separate ourselves from the world. Holy without blame. Holy without blame. May we not put the word of God to shame. No. So continue telling God, I don't want to blame. I don't want any blame. I've told God, if I bring blame to the gospel, if I will do it on Monday, let me die on a Sunday. If I will do it in the evening, let me die in the afternoon. If I will do it in the afternoon, let me die in the morning. If I do it in the morning, let me die in the night. So that I will not put Christ to mud. I will not put Christ to open shame again. May the mighty hand of God help us. May the mighty hand of grace help us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And this God has been holy. And this God has been so real and great. So child of God, without blame, without blame, without blame. That's what God is saying. Present your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before the Lord. The Bible didn't say that God will uh, come and present it. The Holy Ghost will present it. No, you're the carrier of your body, the spirit, soul, and body, wherever you're going to. Some people say it doesn't matter. Wear anything, put on anything. Bible say and I say, present your body, a living sacrifice. Present your body, a living sacrifice. Now what the Bible said, so child of God, what are we going to do? Why not we fall into the standard of God? Why not we be who God wants us to be? Why not we be who God said we should be? May the mighty hand of grace be our portion and our possession in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is believer's identity in Christ. That is who, whom God has said you are. Now, in the book of Jude, you know Jude is only one chapter. Jude chapter 1, call it still chapter 1. Jude chapter 1. Let's see verse 24. Child of God, you are called without blame. He gave you a hallelujah. Let the mighty hand of grace and mighty hand of love of God be upon you and be with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Jude, let's see Jude. It's just only one chapter. Let's see verse 24. Jude chapter 1 verse 24. Jude verse 24. Jude chapter 1 verse 24. It's just only one chapter. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. There's a God that can keep you from falling. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. To present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Without present you faultless. That without blame. God wants to present you that day. Jesus wants to present you before the Lord. He will tell God, this is my son. This is my servant. He believed in you. He threw me. He is faultless. He is blameless. He has wrapped you in a white linen. He has wrapped you and clothed you with glory. Have you dated your garment? Say no. I will cleanse my garment. I will renew my garment. I will restore my garment. I will revive my garment. I will make this God holy and acceptable. And this mighty man of valor will help me. May the mighty hand of grace help you. So that you are not going to be blamed in any form. So that you are not living by yourself. You are not living for yourself. You are living for the Lord Jesus of Nazareth forever and ever and ever and ever plus ever, including ever, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Child of God, I plead with you. Can you begin to say, God, I want to live a blameless life, yet without blame. That's one of your identities in Christ. Christ don't want you to be blamed for any reason because I put his own personality in you. You are supposed to be favored by all. When people saw Abraham, they favored him. When even the favor of Abraham gets into Lord and people started favoring him, the mighty hand of favor can come upon you now so that you're not going to have any blame of any type. The mighty hand of grace will move in you and move upon you. Having discussed this issue with you right now, child of God, I am asking you a question. Wouldn't you want to live a blameless life? Wouldn't you want to say, Lord, today we without blame. Oh, you don't want me to blame, be blamed. That's why you created me clean, created me perfectly. Therefore, let me not be the one that is going to change the color of my garment. No, no, no. I want to live a life of blameless. I still love verse 24 where we read in Jude chapter 1 verse 24. 
The Bible said, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. May God keep you from falling. May God keep me from falling. This is the last day. The Bible said, one of the signs is that a lot of people will fall away. But you are not going to fall away. I will not fall away. We shall remain as a remaining for the Lord. We shall remain and still telling the newer generation, you are wrong. All this you are introducing to Christianity is not supposed to be. We shall be the mouthpiece of God. We shall not all die. We shall live and redirect them. We shall live and give them direction of what to do and how, where to be. The Bible said that, or oh, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, you shall not fall, I will not fall. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. Oh my, my, my. Lord, may I be faultless. May I not be blamed for any reason. May I. Every blame has been taken away according to what the Bible told me in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. The Bible told me in Ephesians, according to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, according to I choose him all, in himself before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Without blame, therefore, I will live a holy life, a clean life, a pure life, a sanctified life, a life that will give God praise. A life that will magnify the name of the Lord. When others are falling away, I'll be falling into Christ. When others are falling in love with the money, with the world, I shall fall deeper love with Christ Jesus of Nazareth. The Lord is going to raise a generation that will praise him. He will equip them with unction. He will equip them with wisdom. He will equip them with anointing. He will equip them with finances. He will equip them with boldness. He will equip them with power and strength of prayers. And they will go far and pray Jesus. Will you be ready to be among this army? Will you be ready and say, Lord, I'm tired of being a weak Christian. I am tired of being a haphazard Christian. I am tired of being, sister, pray for me, Christian. Brother, pray for me, Christian. I want to be in the center of Christianity. I want to be in the center of Christ. I want Christ to control everything I'm going to say, everything I'm going to do. I want Christ to be everything in my mind. If that is the desire of your heart, if that is what you're saying, it's time for us to pray. I want to serve you, Lord Jesus. How can I be there where I am and keep quiet as he sin as going to hell. I don't evangelize. I don't pray. Nobody knows me in my community. Nobody knows me in my environment as a child of God. Then I have something to blame. Don't you know that you have, you have blame? Look at what happened that even when Lord was asked to enter, Lord have been preaching to these people. Lord have been warning them about the evil they are doing. You are keeping quiet. The blood of these people will be upon your head. The Bible says when I say a sinner will die, that sinner will surely die. If you want him, then you are free from his blood. If you don't want him, you're going to answer. Oh God, who are you going to answer before God? I've not even finished answering my own. Why should I answer that of Mr. A or Mr. B? I want to stand before God and give account of my personal life, the way I lived my life, the way I did it before the Almighty God. Let the mighty hand of grace help us. Let the mighty hand of grace help us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May Christ's name be honored. May Christ's name be glorified. May Christ's name be magnified. Now and forevermore. In Jesus' wonderful name, hallelujah. Amen. Having had this into the child of God, what part of your life has blame? What part of your life have people been complaining? It's a child of God, but. Remember, that man was a great man of war, but. What is the but in your life? What is that side of your life? Your husband complain, your wife complain, your children complain, your mother complain, your father complain, your friends complain about. What part of your life is that? Do you know how time to say, God, remove this reproach. Remove this blame from me. I want to be blameless. And I want to serve you in holiness and truth. May the mighty hand of God help us. May I be who Christ wants me to be. In Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Oh, God, we give you praise. Can you begin to say, Lord, I thank you for this word. I begin to say, God, I thank you for my life to hear it raw. I'm alive to hear it this way. I'm very grateful. Can you begin to talk to God? Can you begin to talk to the Holy Spirit? Can you begin to say, Holy Spirit, you were sent to me, that me and you were going to move far, but I abandoned you on the way and did what I like and did it my own way. But Holy Spirit, help me. But Holy Spirit, sustain me. But Holy Spirit, preserve me. But Holy Spirit, keep me. Oh, draw me closer to God. Open my eyes of understanding. Lord, strengthen me not to sin against you for any reason. Father, remove every blame around me and make me to be blameless before you. As I choose me blameless, may I remain blameless before you. Let the blood begin to wash me and cleanse me. If you are here, you want to say yes, I want to join. 
I want to be among the people that will live such a life. I want to be identified in Christ. You can be identified in Christ without being born again. You cannot just live a blameless life without being born again. If you want to be born again, you must have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If that is what you want to do, can you lay your right hand on your heart? Lay your right hand on your heart and say, I'm say, Lord Jesus. Yes, you lay your right hand on your heart, lift up your left hand and say, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry I am a sinner. Forgive me every sin and unrighteousness. Give me grace to be your child. Let me live for you and for you alone. And let the great grace of God be upon my life. Now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you let back that two hands in your heart, say, Lord Jesus, as I begin to pray for you. Father, I thank you for her. I thank you for him, O oh Lord. He has made this decision. She has made this decision. Forgive him, forgive her. Cleanse him, purify him. O oh Lord, wash him with the blood of Jesus. Let the cleansing power of Christ cleanse you. Let the purifying blood of Jesus purify you now. Watch you and make you whole in the name of Jesus Christ. And let the glorious hand of the Lord be upon you. And let the mightiness of the Lord be upon you. And let the joy of the Lord remain the strength of your life. Now and forevermore in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you with the blessings of the Lord. I favor you with the favor of the Lord. As I have left the camp of sin and come to the camp of righteousness, may the Lord hold you by the power of his mind and let God, God's love guide you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You child of God already, every blame in your life, may God begin to remove them. Every blame of hatred, every blame of envy, every blame of pride of any type. As you are listening to this voice right now, let the mighty hand of Christ fall upon you. Let the glorious power of Jesus fall upon you. Let his goodness and mercy move in your life. And at the end, let the name of Christ be glorified. For unto the Lord be our glory. We bless you, Lord. We say thank you for your love and mercy. We say thank you for everything you've done. I love you and name daddy. Be glorified and magnified, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. I got to see you again by Sunday, 9 a.m. Nigerian time. May God be the keeper of your soul. Protect and preserve you in the name of Jesus. It is where which you are going at and coming in. God, the keeper of his soul, will keep you. His name will be our Lord forever. Thank you so much. Feel free. If you have any issue to discuss with me, we have our WhatsApp there. Our WhatsApp number is there. Just drop a message through WhatsApp. I'll get back to you. And we'll have something to talk and discuss. The joy of the Lord remains your strength. Thank you so much. And it's well with you. Until I meet you again, remain blessed and favored. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.